math and, and physics and and biology. Um, but I honestly, I was I was a little queasy uh, in terms of like thinking about injuries and stuff. I remember actually, I don't know if Miss Durley is still at OKM. Okay, well she was an awesome biology teacher, and she shared with us this this one story about um, it was like it's like a famous movie. I kind of remember the the name of it, but it's this true story about this guy who um, I think he was rock climbing and he got his arm stuck in a rock. You might have heard this. That's it. Yeah. And so she she shared this YouTube video about the guy talking about his experience. And I remember like almost fainting thinking about this story. So I don't think medicine would have been a good career path for me. Um, I mean, could have worked out, but uh, I'm glad I found something that I was really passionate about. Um, and so what I learned from that is like, if you don't know what to do your, with your life, just do something. Um, you can explore and try different things and learn along the way. So you don't have to map it out all right now. Uh, I ended up going to UBCO. It's a great school. Highly recommend if you're, if you're thinking about that. Um, and yeah, so I started a science degree. And I took some courses. I was about a year in and I ended up, so my buddy was taking this course. It was called Engineering CAD CAM or Engineering Drawing and CAD CAM. Let's see. There you go. Um, and I was like, I, I didn't really know what it was. Like, what is engineering drawing, right? Um, and it turned out that it was really similar to that drafting course that I was thinking about taking in high school. Um, so you got to draw different things, like whether it's an iPhone or like, you know, a floor plan or even like a door hinge, something like that. Um, engineers, they actually like design these things and then they make them. Uh, and so what we did in that course, we learned how to draw like on paper. And then we also learned how to do 3D modeling, which was really, really fun. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. So this is SolidWorks. I don't know if you're familiar with it at all, uh, but we created like a, a tractor in that course. Um, and we designed the motor and the engine and, and put it all together. Um, and we also got to 3D print things. So that's like a little bit about engineering um, and this course in particular. But I still, I wasn't thinking of switching into engineering. It was just like a fun course as an elective for me in my second year um, of undergrad. And so I actually, yeah, the only reason that I thought about it was because an academic advisor reached out to me and she was like, oh, are you interested in, in switching into engineering? And I was like, no, <laughs> but um, I would love to hear more about engineering and, and what that is. Because I didn't know what it was. None of my family members, at the time, except for one cousin actually was an engineer, um, but I didn't, I hadn't really heard about what it, what it actually was. Um, and so I go into this meeting, I'll actually tell you a bit of a story about that meeting because it was, it was kind of funny. Um, I go into the meeting and, and there's this, this academic advisor as well as this professor um, asking a lot of questions about engineering, figuring out what it was for me and they started asking me a bunch of questions too. Um, and then at the very end of the meeting, I, I asked, I was like, so like if I wanted to switch into engineering, uh, like when would I have to decide? And then the, the professor pipes up and he's like, oh, you don't get to decide that. Like we're interviewing you for the engineering program. And I had no idea. So it was, it was a funny, funny time, but um, they ended up letting me into the program anyways. Very thankful for that. Uh, and I decided to switch in, but I was, I was a little like, I, I was a little concerned about, oh, wrong one again, thanks. Yeah, so I was a little concerned about like, so I'd done like a year and a half of sciences, right? And it felt like I was just throwing all of that work away uh, because a lot of the courses wouldn't go towards my engineering degree and that was kind of unfortunate, uh, but I decided to switch into it anyways. Um, and so something I learned from that was just like, don't be afraid to switch directions. Even if it feels like you're throwing away a lot of stuff, um, it's often like if you follow something that you really love, something you're interested in more, often that'll be uh, a very good choice for your future, right? It's, it's throwing away like a little bit of your life, but you move on and, and take what you learned from that experience too. Um, yeah, so, uh, so in my engineering degree, I, so after my first year, I got to try a little bit of research. And so when I, when I was a kid thinking about like the term research, that sounds like the most boring thing ever, like reading papers and writing papers. Some people love doing that. 
uh, but personally that's that's like my least favorite part about research and probably the least that I end up doing as well so it's it's a component of research uh, but there's a whole lot more to it and so my first experience with research was actually going to Sweden um, I got to go through this like go global program so a lot of universities have these programs um, and you can go visit another university and either do research or take courses there so I highly recommend doing that if you get the chance um, and yeah so research isn't just about reading papers awesome way to travel explore the world I learned so much about a different culture um, and then you also get to discover and like actually design and invent new things so in Sweden I was looking at the amount of lead in common brass products and so you actually put lead into brass so that, to make it more machinable um, and so basically that's what you do right to make good good products but it's unfortunate because that also leaches into the environment right and that's not ideal uh, it's bad for the health bad for the environment um, but also kind of necessary for these these products and so we we're cutting up a bunch of different uh, different products and we um, like figured out the chemistry figured out how much lead was in these these things and it turned out that a lot of them were like above the legal limit uh, so it was, we discovered something and then uh, the researchers that I was working with continued working in that and hopefully helping the environment through that um, and so after that I went back to UBCO and I continued doing research I uh, started to work in this lab. It was called the Advanced Control, Advanced Control and Intelligence System Lab. So if you ever get a chance to go visit, highly recommend. We, I worked on robots. So we were, I was programming this robotic arm, really cool. Um, and then I also, so I got to create like some of my own projects too. Uh, so I worked on this with a couple other students. PhD student was kind of guiding me and I actually got to build the device. So. Basically, it's a cyclist collision warning system. So you can see here, there's, I 3D printed a little case and we put a bunch of sensors inside and it was sensing for uh, vehicles or other cyclists coming up behind um, the first cyclist. And we were looking at the amount of danger that there was to that cyclist and then actually warning the first cyclist. So for instance, if you have a car that's coming up really fast and close behind uh, the cyclist, then we actually had little motors, kind of like the motors in your phones, um, that would vibrate in the handlebars and then uh, direct the, the cyclist towards safety. So that was one project I worked on. And see. yeah, and I also got to work on self-driving cars, which is a really fun project. So I was looking at the perception system. So grabbing a bunch of different sensors, putting it on top of the vehicle and basically allowing the vehicle to see things around it and then figuring out how to maneuver the vehicle automatically. That's some of the projects I worked on in undergrad. And then after that, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I was thinking of going into industry, maybe working on self-driving cars. Uh, I was applying to jobs. And then my supervisor, he was, so my undergraduate supervisor, he asked me like, Jess, like, have you ever considered grad school? And I was like, I don't really know what that is and why I would do that. And so it turned out, like grad school, basically you get to do research. You get to collaborate with other people and, and create new products, new designs, um, and invent things. And so I thought, you know, that sounds okay. I'll at least apply to grad school um, and think about it if I actually get in. And so I applied to some schools in the States um, and then still wasn't really sure, but they actually flew me out when I was accepted to MIT. They flew me out onto campus. Um, and I got to meet professors there. And a lot of the people who worked there were working on essentially making the world a better place. And so that sounds really cheesy, right? Um, but that was one of the main reasons that I decided to go to grad school, um, because these people were working on cutting edge research, right? And they were actually trying to like, make a difference in the world. And so th this is one of the lobbies at MIT. Um, and I remember seeing this poster and it says like, research for a better world. And, um, I think passion for a better world and there's like a little microcontroller over there that I had worked on before um, and so I ended up deciding to go go to grad school and so this was like a master's and PhD program and I so for my undergrad I was doing mechanical engineering which is basically 
designing things that can move. So that's like gearboxes and vehicles and even like hinges on doors, anything that has some sort of moving components, it's probably a mechanical engineer who designed it. Um, but I was accepted into this computer science program, which is basically you get to program software, right? Um, and I realized I could do basically any research I wanted as long as I, there was a professor who was also interested in that research um, and he would take me on. And so I ended up meeting this, this uh, man, his name is Dr. Hal Abelson, and he works on app inventors. And so one of the things I did in undergrad was teach uh, high school students, middle school students how to code using Scratch. So I don't know if everyone, anyone's actually used Scratch before, maybe. Um, but basically, MIT developed Scratch so that people can more easily code um, and learn the basics about coding. And so you can see in this screenshot over here, there's these little blocks, and you like drag them on, drop them into the screen, connect them together, and then create a program. And so App Inventor is, is very similar to Scratch. Um, also at MIT, similar blocks, uh, similar design. But what you get to do with App Inventor is create apps. And so students create um, their own apps and learn about how to code. Um, and I get to teach students about robotics and, uh, and how to code as well. So I work with some lovely people, actually in this building. This is uh, called the Stata building, very confusing building. So if you're ever out in Boston, I can definitely give you a tour. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really fun place to be um, and learn at MIT. So, what I did with that for my master's, basically, um, you have to do one big project for your thesis, uh, for your master's. And so what I ended up doing was converting or like adding on to the App Inventor interface a system where you can program Amazon Alexa. And so I was teaching kids about what conversational AI is, which is basically the ability of a computer to converse with humans. And, and so what I did, basically, you could code like what Alexa would hear and then how she would respond. Um, and anyone can do this. It's not public yet, but if you Google App Inventor, eventually it will be public. So you can feel free to go try that out. Um, yeah, and so you can program apps and then also like have Alexa understand what's going on in the app and then converse with Alexa, however you wanna program that. And so now what I'm doing is trying to democratize or make it, programming really, really easy. Um, and have like a low barrier to entry so you can easily understand how to program things and how to create things to solve problems like in your community or um, things you care about. And so I'm actually creating a voice-based coding system. So what I did for my master's was a visual coding system. So you drag and drop these blocks, right? And then uh, what I'm doing now is basically making it so you can just talk to an agent and then uh, it'll respond and you can have a conversation and eventually program something. So this is just an example. Um, basically, you can say to the system, like, make my robot dance while you play my favorite song. And the system's not gonna understand that right away. So it might ask you like, oh, how do I make a robot dance? Or what's your favorite song? And then eventually you'll just build this program up just by talking to the system. Um, for instance, like make the wheels move to the right and to the left and maybe the system already knows what that means. And so it'll program that for you. Um, and I just wanted to end with a couple final notes. So I learned a lot through my journey and I had no idea like where I would end up when I was in high school, right? Um, and so for me, it's, it's not about the destination. It's not about what, where you end up, right? It's about the journey, about how you interact with other people, how you, um, find things that you're passionate about and solve problems and, and help others, right? So um, I'll just share a couple notes. If you don't know what to do, just do something. But if, like I said before, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Ended up going into sciences, switching to engineering, and then switching to computer science. Uh, and it's been a journey, but it's been really exciting. And I've learned a ton through it all. And yeah, so don't worry about getting it right, right away. Don't be afraid to try new things. Um, yeah, the only reason I switched to engineering was because I tried this engineering drawing course, right? If I hadn't tried it, I would probably still be in sciences, and that would be fine, but um, I'm really happy I did try that. 
um, yeah, so don't be afraid to change directions as well. Find things you love and pursue them. Um, yeah, if you like engineering, that's awesome. If you don't, it's great to know too, right? Uh, so my, my older sister is in medicine, like I said before. My younger sister is actually an animator, so she pursued art. Uh, and she's actually working like on a DreamWorks show. It's really, really cool. And I had no idea that was like a potential career option, right? And she didn't really know either, except for her, her friend had done this program before too. Um, so there's tons of different things out there. Try, try new things, and if you like it, definitely try pursuing them. At the same time though, listen to the older and the wiser. So if I hadn't listened to my supervisor to apply to grad school, I also would not be where I am today. Um, so I'm really thankful for the wisdom he shared with me and uh, yeah, just his expertise. And lastly, it's okay to fail. Um, so I did a mechanical engineering degree undergrad, right? I applied to one mechanical engineering program and I didn't get into it. Um, and that felt like a big failure to me because you know that's what I had been working on for so long, like four or five years of my life, and I couldn't get into grad school for that program. But I got into the computer science program, so you know it all works out. Um, and if you can learn something from failures, then it's definitely worth it. Um, yeah, so I think that's mostly what I wanted to share with you. So fortunately, in the end, there's no roadmap. You don't have to follow a specific path, right? Um, so many opportunities out there to do something new and yeah I'd love to open it up for questions so anything like from fears and concerns about what comes after high school um, yeah about what engineering is what UBCO is like what MIT is like what it's like being an international student in the states um, yeah and feel free to send me an email too so I have my email address is jess.cso.mit.edu and also, you guys, if you have other questions, in mind getting them on the mic. Uh, please let us know. I'll run over. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions out there? I'll break your eyes. Uh, okay, so. I'm sure they're wondering things and thinking things and super thankful because information like I'm sitting there listening and checking boxes going that's helpful that's helpful that's helpful but when you're in grade 11 and 12 and you're looking forward and you're feeling that daunting fear of I don't know looking back what are things that they could do now to help them prepare things that they might just be glancing over and you realize you know what this was a really important skill I wish I had done better or I did do it well and it really helped like what are there some things that they can do now to prepare themselves most for the future yeah, that's a really, really good question. I think for me, what I wish I had done is, is explore more things in high school. So there's like that drafting course, right? Or, or um, yeah, just finding things you're interested in and not being afraid to, to go pursue them. And then also, like I was involved in a lot of clubs and stuff in high school, which was really awesome. Um, I was in like the Social Justice, Justice Club, which was cool, and Rotary Interact. And I learned a lot of like, leadership skills and, and soft skills that were really useful uh, for my future. Um, what else? Yeah, in undergrad too, I, I uh, was involved in like the mechanical engineering club and learned how to make like micro drones and fly them around. And um, so I'd, yeah, highly recommend just like finding things you're interested in and, and joining clubs or, or uh, yeah, just pursuing them. Thanks, Jessica. So we have a couple of questions coming in from online. Um, engineering is a tough program. Any hints on how to get through the first year successfully? That's a very good question. So it is a tough program. Uh, you have to take, at least at UBCO, you take six courses instead of five every year. Uh, so it's a ton of work. And I think the most important thing for me was building up a community and, and finding people who could, you could ask questions to. Um, and get help from. And then also not being afraid to go talk to professors. I think that's something that really, really helped me. There, a lot of them have like open door policies. So you can go, go talk to them whenever, um, or they have office hours. And it's, it was really daunting for me first, like going and talking to them, but uh, yeah, definitely worth it. So I highly recommend that. And, and just finding people, like-minded people who uh, can help you out and that you can ask questions too. Okay, we got one more question from Mr. Ross. Mr. Uh, Ross. Yep, Mr. Ross, Quest, BC. 
Um, were there, there's actually three questions here. Were there scholarships to MIT? Was it costly as a Canadian? And what was your average from high school to UBCO? Yeah, that's also, I don't remember my average, <laughs> but it was definitely in the A range. Um, but uh, in terms of costliness, it was, um, so it's all paper. What's great, uh, at MIT, they have this program, I think as an undergrad, you might have to pay something, but it's based on your income. And then in the master's PhD program, they actually pay you to go to school, which is really cool, because you're doing research for them, you're working for them. Uh, and so they actually fully fund. If you get into MIT, then they fully fund it. Um, and at UBCO, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of scholarships you can apply to, too. Um, yeah, I think there's like president's entrance or something and all sorts of things like for extracurricular involvement that you can apply to, which is really awesome. Um, and I'm so thankful to live in Canada because school here costs so much less. Uh, and a lot of people out in the States are unfortunately out in, in debt, but they also have many opportunities out there. So, um, yeah, that's my experience. Does that make yeah, sense? Any, yeah. Anybody else have any questions or comments? So let's try to leave the mic here or one mic left. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Yeah. Some questions or comments? And I also want to add to that, like, even if you don't have like very high grades, that doesn't mean like you can't get into these universities. They, they look at like across the board what you've done and what your interests in are. And I think now they're asking a lot of essay questions too and trying to figure out who you are and what you're passionate about too. Um, so definitely don't like count yourself out if you don't have high grades uh, because there's, yeah, there's tons of opportunity there even without, without high grades. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so when you want to switch like a faculty, okay, so yeah. that, that could be a lot of kids because they're not sure what they want to take. Um, you suggested just do it, just try it. The courses that like obviously some transfer over, the ones that don't, can you speak to like potential skills and adaptations that you learned going through them that then you could apply to later on so they understand like what I think I know what you mean but I'm not sure that they understand what that means but nothing's wasted if it's all part of a an experience that you can then benefit later down the road can you speak to that a little bit definitely yeah so for instance I think like chemistry didn't transfer um, and that was actually a really tough course for me so they have we have these labs right we have to do titrations I don't know if you've done chemistry titrations and and all these uh, sort of skills and, and those didn't necessarily transfer to my engineering degree those skills um, but the skills I learned in terms of like problem solving and learning to work really hard and um, and just yeah building community community too in those lab environment settings those definitely transferred over to, to the engineering program uh, and then also like technical writing is really important so if you're if you love English and, and possibly like writing about uh, about like products or, or different engineering things like that definitely transfers over to and they need more technical writers um, in that space uh, but yeah there's there's lots of different things that, that transfer over um, yeah Jessica I have one um, what's one of your favorite things about MIT or just Boston in general oh, that's a really good question so something I, I love about MIT is that like no matter your sigma, this is what they say, no matter how like different you are from the norm, you're still accepted. Um, so there's a lot of like very interesting people there uh, who work on like very unique, interesting problems. And uh, I feel like everyone, or most people at least, they, they build each other up and very curious about um, other people's research. And so it's just, it's a really cool environment to work in. Uh, and I, I also love, so they have like lots of, lots of different things you can use to make things. So I don't know if there's like a maker space on, around in Kelowna or, or something a little bit maybe, uh, but there's tons of maker spaces out in Boston. And so you can 3D print things, you can laser cut things, uh, and you can learn to do like wood shop and metalwork. 
uh, and and also like there's just so many cool activities you can do too so i learned how to sail out in boston and uh, i can take a sailboat out on the charles river whenever i want which is amazing um and so yeah there's just like tons of different experiences uh and different people and you get to to like there's so many people from different cultures who all come to mit and you get to learn about like their experiences in their home country or uh, wherever they were before so it's just yeah it's a pretty cool place to be so um having your background in sciences um did you ever consider going into uh, maybe a more specialized field uh, where you can combine both engineering and sciences and then um, along the lines of quantum computing or uh, like biology so like uh, biological engineering? Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't probably something that I was super interested in. I was more interested in like computer science and mechanical engineering, but that's definitely something you can do. So there is like biomedical engineering. Um, where you create things that doctors use, so surgical tools or robotics for, for you know, surgery. And then uh, you can also, so like quantum computing is a lot of physics, right? Um, and that's also definitely related to, to engineering as well. And I know a lot of physicists who end up doing a lot of like computing things. Um, and so, yeah, it's really cool to see the multidisciplinary nature of engineering how many different things you can do within that realm. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in like anything, designing basically anything, highly recommend like thinking about engineering if you're interested. The Red Sox, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, I think the Bruins one, last year, yeah. It was, I, I guess that's kind of a <laughs> not not such a good thing here, but but it was fun. <laughs> Is MIT like purely engineering? No what other courses are there. Yeah, so there's there's all sorts of different courses, and they're all numbered too. So I'm course six, which is computer science. There's um, like you can do medicine there. You can do. We have a whole library that's all just like music. So they have like a whole music program. They have a philosophy program actually in the same building that I work in uh, yeah and they have arts and, and lots of unique courses too so I don't know if you've ever heard of the media lab before but they they take like all of these different disciplines and kind of combine them and they're designing really unique things like some art and like so you can have machine learning which is like artificial intelligence algorithms basically that create art so they might be like painting or like creating music, generating it all uh, without like human, humans doing that. Um, so there's, yeah, lots of different disciplines that all come together at MIT, which is really cool. And something else you can do uh, is cross register with Harvard. So I can just take Harvard classes um, whenever I want and they can take classes at MIT. And also if you're at like Boston University, you can take classes at MIT and Harvard. Um, so there's just like tons of opportunity, which is cool. Hey. I'm just wondering um, how many different areas of engineering are there at UBC and when did you have to declare the mechanical engineering? Yeah, so when I was there, there was mechanical, civil, and electrical. So there wasn't too many, uh, but they're all very broad. So you can specialize like later or even just take one of those degrees and, uh, and go into like biomedical, especially mechanical is very, very broad. So you can be doing like mechatronics, which is electrical and mechanical combined or like biomedical stuff. I think they might have a specific program now um, for like biomedical. I know they're creating a manufacturing program um, and an AI program. Uh, and I, when I was there, I declared mechanical in my second year, but now I think you might have to declare like at the end of first year. I'm not totally sure though. You can look that up. So, yeah. Um, what's like a specific job that you can apply to once you like achieve your uh, master's? Yeah, that's a, also a good question. So when I was thinking about doing grad school, I was like, why, 
why would I do grad school, right? Um, and some jobs, so there's lots of like industry jobs that require a master's degree or a PhD degree, and that's mostly in the research realm. So if you get a bachelor's, for instance, in software engineering, you can go become a software engineer, and then basically what you do is, is like program different things that, that the company wants you to program. That's generally what you do. If you have like a master's or a PhD, then you can be involved in research, which is almost like, you almost get to decide more, like uh, more unique things to create. So things that haven't actually been thought of before. Um, so if you're interested in, in like inventing new things, then a master's or a PhD is a really good idea. If you're more interested in creating a product that's like really useful for, for people um, and like getting it out to as many people as possible, then like a bachelor's degree is totally good. Uh, and you can go be an engineer right after your bachelor's degree. So it just kind of depends what you're interested in and, and what you want to do at the end of your degree. Okay, yeah. What's the big difference? Because we often hear from kids after first year, I'm like, oh man, what an adjustment. Can you think back to that transition and what you guys might want to be doing in the future? Yeah, so for me, it was it was a big adjustment. Um, I remember first year, I would, I would like sit in a cubicle on campus because I was commuting, so I didn't, like I wasn't staying in res on campus. Uh, so I would commute and like have an early morning class and then just sit in a cubicle and like, work on problem sets all day, and then finally like go home and probably work some more. It, in my first year, it probably wasn't the most efficient way of studying. So I think like study groups and, and finding people who are also working on the same thing is really, really helpful. Uh, and yeah, asking questions and not, not, yeah, like trying not to do everything on your own. Um, it's really, really helpful to have like a community of people to help you so but it's also good to learn on your own too um, and be able to teach other people that helped me a lot too so if you're in a study group or something and you get to teach other people that's another way to learn well All right, just want to say thank you from all of us, Jessica. That was awesome. Um, let's give her a big round of applause. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for having me and for, for listening to my, my story. And I wish you all the best um, in your futures and happy holidays. Thanks. All right, so if you're visiting from another spot, you're welcome to. Um,